guys, Laura here. I'm here today to do my top Wednesday or top five Wednesday. Um, I told you guys a couple weeks ago that I started a blog. It's called Laura's Bookish Corner. It will be linked below. And every meme that I can do a video, a corresponding video to, I will do a blog post and then I will do a video. Um, the theme this week is side chips. What is your favorite chip that does not include your protagonist? Well, of it. This was super hard. Um, I really had to look at my bookshelves and be like, all right, what characters do I like that like are not relationships like that that do not include a main character it was really hard but like once I started thinking about it I was like oh well okay these characters so I'm gonna tell you my top five ships um and then you guys can go to my blog and read like my more like detailed thoughts I guess um but the first one I want to talk about is um the pushing the limit series but I want to talk about Chris and Lacey um, how Katie McGarry writes is every book kind of focuses on a different pair and you guys really explore their relationship in depth, but Chris and Lacey are the only people in that series, minus a few others, that you don't get, like, their relationship, you don't get a book about them, and there's other characters in the series that just are never paired up, but they're paired up throughout the entire series, so you learn a lot about Chris, Chris and Lacey, I just really like them, I especially love them in Dare You Two. Because they're really interconnected with Beth and Ryan's relationship, and they are the leads in that series. But they act as both a sounding board, a vice, but they also, like, are really cool, unique characters. I love the character of Lacey. I think she's great. I love how how a good friend she is to Beth, and also how intense she gets with Ryan. But I just want to know more about, like, their dynamics and how they got together and all that stuff, but they are so much fun to read about, and I really enjoy them in um, Dare You 2 and also Chasing the Impossible, which is Lo Logan's and Abby's story, but I really loved all this, all, all, all Katie McGarry stories in um, the Pushing the Limit series, but these were the two characters that, like, I just was really intrigued by and wanted to know more, but in the Pushing, but in Dare You 2, they acted as a great couple, and I just loved their interaction and loved their friendship that they had with Beth and Ryan. Um, the next book is, um, the next ship is Nico and Will Salas from the Blood of Olympus series and the Hidden Oracle series. I really love them. They got together at the, like, the end of, um, the end of, I think it was, I think it might have been House of Hades they got together. Um, but House of Hades, Blood Olympus, but then you get to really see their relationship in, um, the, the, the Hidden Oracle series, and I just really liked it. It was the first time Rick Riordan did, like, an honest LGBTQ relationship, and he's done many others. If you read his other series, especially recently, you see a lot of LGBTQ representation, but I just really like the relationship between Nick, um, Nico and Will, and I think that you especially notice it in, um, you know, in, um, the Hidden Oracle series, you just really, like, see their their dynamics and how they interact with each other. And I like them in the newer series because there's less characters. This series is jam-packed with characters. There's, like, eight leads. So Will and Nico are not the lead characters, but when they're in the subsequent series, they have a little bit more time to develop them and notice their relationship. And Will is the son of Apollo, so he's a little bit more ingrained. And Nico is just a cool character to watch. But I really like not only the development of their relationship, but also their relationship in the subsequent series. Um, and then my my top one of my top ships is I don't know if they're actually in this book, but this is the only book I have in handy is Simon and Isabella from the Mortal Instrument series. I love them as a couple. When I originally started the Mortal Instrument series, I really was a big fan of Simon and Clary, and I did not like Jace at all. Um, but then, ultimately, as the series go on, I grew to really love Simon, and, um, Isabel and Simon, and I loved it. I think that their relationship is so unique and so different because it's a shadow hunter and a vampire, and you do not think that there's any possible way, especially, like, who these characters are, that they could wind up being together, but they do wind up being together, and it is a great relationship, and they're just so much fun together, and I really, really love them in City of Lost Souls and City of Heavenly Fire, and I love them in... Simon's own book, but during in the actual Mortal Instrument series is the definitely the build up to their relationship, and I really really enjoy it. Um, the next ship that I want to talk about, side ship, is from um, Rick Riordan's Magnus Chase series, The God of Asbord, um, and that is Hearts and Blitzen. Um, so the one thing I like about Rick Riordan overall is he does all his relationships so well, and the, this relationship is between an elf and a dwarf. Which, typically, in literature, they do not get along, but these two characters just are hysterical. It is a dwarf 
that um, it's a dwarf that wants to be a tailor and it's an elf that can't talk. So their dynamic is just so cool. And I think Magnus says it best throughout the entire books. They're like a mother and a father to Magnus because he's like this, you know, demigod orphan. But they're just so funny. And I love their dynamics. And they, oh, it's just, they will do anything to save each other's lives. And I think that that is just so sweet. And you could read so much into their relationship. But overall, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, and I hope you guys will check it out if you have not. Rick Riordan is a master at creating ships, even when it is not the main ships of the story. The last relationship should be no surprise to anyone if you've been watching my videos. I love Ron and Hermione from Harry Potter. I think that they are probably one of the best relationships I've ever read. One of the best long-term relationships I have ever read. I was never a Harry and her um I was never a Harry and Hermione shipper just because I always saw them as brother and sister. But really, for Ron and Hermione, their relationship is just one of the best. The be one of the best slow burn relationships that I've ever read. They literally wait until the last 100 pages in Deathly Hallows to have anything happen. And I just love their relationship. Their friendship is just so special. And I think that they, you know, it's friendship first. And, you know, I, it's just, I love them. I don't think, I could, I could do a whole video about why I love Run Hermione so much. But overall, if you, if you have not experienced the joy that is Run Hermione, I highly recommend you, recommend you read it. There is so many lines and quotes in the book that I just come back to one of my funniest quotes is when um Hermione is trying to light something and she's like I don't have fire I how can I get fire and Ron yells up from the thing that they're stuck in are you a witch or not and it is the I I fall off my chair laughing every single time I read that but they are definitely one of my favorite couples ever in literature but definitely considered a side chip but those are all of my top five relationships, um, top five side ships um, in literature. Comment below, what is your top side ship? What, um, what, have, what have I forgotten and what should I be reading? Also, go on my blog and comment again and maybe I will pick up some new things to read. Let me know if you agree with me or if you don't. But I hope you guys are having a great day and I'll talk to you guys later.